Hi, so this is a follow-up post um, with a bit of a video that shows you some of the extra stages after the blog post that I did that showed you creating the base outline framework structure for using DSC for deploying the new self-service portal for Service Manager from Microsoft. So within the Azure portal, this is my Azure Automation account, you see we have two things here. We have the DSC nodes, these are the computers or the servers that I want to apply my configurations to. Currently I have zero, so I'll show you onboarding one. And we actually have another node which is the configurations. So these are some of the configurations I was testing for this. The SCSM one is the one that I've been working on, which my blog post details. But this one's got a couple of other little extra bits in it, mainly about actually importing some DSC resources. So these are actual PowerShell modules that do some of the behind the scenes work we're using the same type of command structure to be able to actually utilize configuring the server for us. So specifically, I'm using it to change the default website. So the default website will always be installed on port 80. I want to actually use this new installer self-service portal on port 80. So I'm gonna change the default website to port 81 using the X website um, DSC resource and specifying to target the default website. I'm also then going to add a firewall rule to allow the port 80, which is going to generally be open anyway, but I want to specifically make sure there is a new firewall rule in place for port 80 to allow the self-service portal for the service manager portal through. So I've uploaded this configuration, so I did all that um, typing within the blog post, saved it out as a PowerShell script, and then uploaded it into Azure DSC. Did that by using the add configuration, basically specified that file, which resides now here. But first, I need to actually bring one of these DSC nodes in. So if I flick to my server, now I've already put my Azure subscription details in, so that's my subscription ID, etc. I don't want to show you that, so I'm not going to. Now I'm just going to run through a couple of bits. I'm going to add an Azure account. So this will prompt me for my credentials. Now I'm actually using the older um, Azure PowerShell module, hence I'm going to have to use the switch Azure mode and then run the same commands. This is now being superseded by the V1 release, so you can actually use the um, Azure RM commandlets. Let me log in first. Take me to my ADFS site. So this is just specifying the context on what this lot's gonna run under. switch using Azure Resource Manager commandlets. And then this bit is where it's gonna go. It's gonna look at the var uh, values that I've assigned to these variables to actually find my Azure Automation account. It's using this computer, and it's gonna download the configuration details for DSC into a CDSC folder. Yes, I want to do this, go and get it. And then I'm gonna tell it to set the local configuration to that one that's just been downloaded. and basically telling it that it needs to be using that configuration for DSC. And just to show you, it's now replied back that using my resource strings, it's going to use that configuration. So if I have a look back in my portal now, I can see that this DSC nodes, so it's still showing zero. If I just refresh the screen, because I can't wait for it. And we now have one. So you can see it's now registered that VM with the service. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into that node. I'm going to assign it a configuration. So I want to assign it the SCSM SSP node of the config and say, go make that server as such. So if I have a look back on this server, so if I have a look at the currently installed amount of roles, should have around 19 so that's the default number of roles that's installed on Windows Server if I can't wait for the configuration to kick in and it will just kick in in the background I'm going to force this to now run and you can see it now starts to go through the MOF file that I've been assigned pulls it down and it now starts to check all the various features that I've assigned so this is now installing all the IIS web server roles in the background to allow the actual self-service portal to install now, one of the parts of the config that I had was that it must install the actual self-service portal release. So I actually have that stored within here in a folder called SSP, and that is the binary files for the self-service portal for Service Manager. 
So it's going to do the installation from there. Now, this is obviously going to take a minute or two. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video and I'll come back when it's got a bit further through. So, a couple of minutes through, you can see this is almost completed now. It's actually finished doing all the web rolls. It's now actually working on renaming the website ports. If we have a look in IIS, See, we've got the default website. It's now currently doing some work on the default website. Let's look in, move that across. Been updated, paths there, it's now doing the installation. So if we have a look at the bindings on this site, we can see it's now changed it to port 81 rather than port 80. It is now doing the installation of the website. That installation doesn't take too long. While we're looking at that, you can see that the actual DSC node within the Azure console is currently still in progress for doing this basic configuration, making sure it's compliant. Installation's going on now. See, we've already got the website appeared, and that is on port 80. So that's the port we specified, and it can now use that because that one's on port 81. We try to browse to that website. You can see it's completed in total 304 seconds to do the configuration. And this is saying not compliant. Should do its check in a second. Interesting. Obviously, if we do a check for the number of roles now, you can see it's significantly increased with an extra 30 different roles. And there's the self service portal ready for use. Just to let you know that initial one where it said it wasn't complying with those errors, it wasn't, it's just purely because it hadn't done a second check to say, now that I've applied all these, is it compliant? Obviously, a little bit of weight, refresh is now showing that it is fully compliant.